do you assess the first days of the Ukrainian counteroffensive? We uh, saw the beginning uh, that was, uh, let's say, moderate. Uh, I uh, believe that uh, we haven't seen uh, uh, the true counteroffensive yet, and uh, more, uh, more will come. Uh, I uh, would call it uh, with uh, some military experience uh, as uh, shaping operations. And are you still um, of the belief that if Ukraine does not make a considerable advances this year, we will see this war turn into a kind of a frozen conflict uh, with more or less static lines? What uh, uh, we see today is uh, that uh, uh, preparation for the counteroffensive uh, took uh, months. Uh, and uh, quite naturally so, because uh, to prepare a uh, significant military force, equip it, train it, uh, uh, get uh, enough resources uh, of uh, all kinds of uh, material uh, takes a long, uh, a long time. Whatever is not achieved this year will have to be postponed uh, uh, till uh, at least spring uh, of uh, next year with uh, all associated difficulties, uh, including uh, continuity of support. Uh, what are your expectations from Vilnius NATO summit and what, in your opinion, will be a satisfactory summit declaration on Ukraine's membership? And should, in your view, President Zelensky come to Vilnius? Uh, I think President Zelensky will be most welcome in, in uh, Vilnius. Uh, his uh, presence uh, would uh, really mark uh, the importance of the event. Uh, I would also uh, very much welcome uh, a clear language about uh, future uh, membership of Ukraine uh, once uh, the war is over. Uh, obviously, the uh, uh, accession process cannot start uh, when uh, the country is still, still uh, in war. Uh, but I uh, strongly believe uh, that um, all of the leaders uh, will understand that uh, having uh, Ukraine on board, uh, both uh, in NATO and EU, is probably the only guarantee uh, how to uh, ensure stability in this region, how to make uh, both NATO and EU stronger, and uh, how to uh, keep uh, Russia and uh, its aggressive policies at bay.